to you as we report at the top of the program. Town officials here are hiring an engineering firm to help evaluate the integrity of other buildings in the area. Some expert perspective now with me is Kobe Karp, a noted architect and Miami resident, and structural engineer Kit uh, Miyamoto, who has had vast experience with building collapses around the world. Kobe, thanks so much for, for being with us. Let me start with you. Um, obviously, there's more we don't know than, than we know right now. What do you, when you, I know you've been looking at that video of the, the fall a lot. What have you, what can you tell from that? I think that, just like the gentleman said before, it's uh, a lot of speculation, but really you can see in the video that the interesting thing is that the Southwest L-shaped building stood. And this building was built in 1981. I was in high school. Um, I was 18 years old. This building is not old. We are working similar buildings up and down the street here that were built in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. I was going to say, the building right next to it, that looks to me like a 1920s, 30s building that's a kind of Art Deco building, maybe that's been rehabbed. You are 100% correct. And that building was renovated, and all of our buildings get renovated. And that's the issue right now. This is an event that we have never had before. Um, you can look at it, you can speculate how it happened, but at the end of the day, it will take us months. To it, it will take months, yes. Yeah. Well, how, how does that even begin to, I mean, how do you even begin to do that? Foresnick en engineering is the way to go. And really the way these buildings were built, which is all the same way. Mm -hmm. Concrete piles, concrete reinforcement around the staircases, around the elevators, which is the spine of the building. And then you can see how the building pancaked down. So well, most people believe that there was a failure between the horizontal and the vertical. But that has to be looked at, that has to be judged, that has to be agreed upon. Yeah. At the end of the day, the reason that the northeast corner is down and the southwest corner is still up, um, that's a mystery. Mm. Um, you can see the vertical shaft holding it up. That's a spine, but nobody really knows. The vertical answer. shaft, is that you call that the spine of the building? Yeah. Most of the buildings here in Florida are built in a similar manner where the staircases, the emergency staircases and or the elevators act as our shear walls. Yeah. The shear walls is what holds us up, that's our spine. Mm. And then the horizontal slabs, which are in this case our eight inch post tension slabs, for example, is what pulls it in and, and are the floors. I, I want to bring Kit in. Kit, you and I spoke last night and it was really just so fascinating, yeah. your description of, of what, you, what you saw in that video. Um, I'm wondering now, 24 hours later, what what comes, what's on your mind in terms of what you want to know, what you feel like we know more about? I think, uh, you know, it's a definitely a classic failure of a collapse, collapse, collapse mode by the column basically fall off. So if the column fell, everything comes down with it, right? So the question is why the column failed. And we talked about yesterday, it's probably possible corrosion of metal inside of the column or possibly the so-called settlement or sinking of the ground in a certain area in a different rate from others, that will cause that. And or potentially that someone just uh, in the smacking to the column, that's, that's also you know, highly unlikely But those things happen. But also the, uh, the, I think it may be combination of it, you know, because the building is actually hard to collapse. There's a lot of redundancy existing building system. That's why you don't see the uh, collapse like this, right? There's the uh, thousands thousands of buildings in the area for tens of years but nothing collapsed because it's hard to collapse actually so even like the earthquake area you know uh, where we live in california the probable collapse of a building is a one percent over the 50 year time and the maximum maximum earthquake so it's really hard to collapse so uh it's maybe maybe different whole bunch of different reasons possible combination of settlement of a soil to the uh, uh, corrosion of the, the steel in a column. But uh, I think eventually the uh, engineers can figure it out though. I know it's going to be very difficult because of the everything come down to the so-called uh, where the failures happened. But uh, you can definitely yeah. get to basically peel the onion off essentially to kind of get down to the bottom, you know. Kip was pointing out last night that, you know, it's the side facing the ocean. You got, you know, the salt yeah. air coming in, salt corrodes uh, metal. And, and, you know, we look at a building, we see the concrete, but there's the steel, there's the rebar inside the concrete, and the salt can actually get to that and corrode. Yes, right? it does. And what we do on the post-tension is we come back on the caps and we refinish them and we 
take care of that over the years. That's part of the 40-year certification. What's interesting to do that, do you have to cut away all the concrete? And, and I mean, how do you get to a, a bar, a rebar that's in the middle of concrete? That's very good. Many times we look at it and then we find out that the cancer is really bigger than what we expected. That's what people call they call the, the, the actually like a cancer that that the the weakening of that um, of that bar, the expansion of that bar cracks the the cement. Absolutely. And in the old buildings that we've done in the 20s and 30s, like in South Beach, right. we actually use beach sand with more salt in it. Um, so the corrosion is even greater. Mm. But at the end of the day, for this to crash like this is a very unique and special situation. But you can see the steel is inside. And the steel, generally speaking, uh, once you start to clean it up, and we do this to many, many of the buildings here, we find more of the cancer, as we call it, within it. Kit, what do you make of, you know, we've heard there were engineers who looked at, at this building in, in as part of this 40 year, you know, planning for this 40 year certification thing. They wrote up a report about, apparently there was some work being done on the roof as well. It is, how, how serious an inspection is it for, the, for a certification like this that, would, would it catch, or should it have caught issues like what may have led to this? Well, I mean, first of all, the, uh, this Miami-Dade County, this uh, statue of a 40-year you know, recertification is uh, considered to be one of the best practices in the world. You don't see that often. Like in California, we don't have there. We don't have here like that. And so it's definitely a prudent approach about them. And uh, especially that the, if the, the major corrosion going on in the columns and uh, uh, you're going to see spalling, which means like a SG cracks in a columns or wall sometimes or floor, you're going to start seeing the uh, uh, potential risk exist. But again, you know, rebar is uh, uh, hidden, right? It's inside of a concrete. In many cases, concrete, there is a the finish around it. So you have to kind of get down into the, the really heart of it to see what's going on. But that's definitely impossible to see that. Mm. And um, I think that uh, eventually what's going to happen here is to kind of get down to the failure mode and you can simulate, you can compute a simulation of how actually the death started falling and why it really happened. Mm. So that will be definitely happening down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Kit Miyamoto, I really appreciate uh, your, your time tonight. I also understand you know my friend Jean-Marc sure. in, uh, in Haiti. I was just talking to him. He's a yeah. big fan of Oh, he did. Uh, also, yeah. Uh, yeah, you've done a lot of work, done a, work, a lot of work in Haiti. Yeah. Uh, Kobe Carb, thank you yeah. so much. Really appreciate your expertise. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank you. Up next, from here in Surfside, as the rescue effort continues, the tight knit Jewish community is coming together to help one another. Some family members of a local synagogue are still missing. Randy Kay joins us with that when we continue.